So you're hopefully now at a stage where you've textured your character, you've done all the different elements. If I just zoom in, you can see we've got those subtle veins on there. Um, you know, you're you're at a stage now where you're pretty happy with where the texture is going, uh, and you want to export all that information now because you want to get it into Maya and start to think about rendering. Um, now, because we've set this up as sub-tools, what you don't want to have to do is go in to each sub-tool and click Export Diffuse Map, Export Displacement Map, Export Object. You know, for each of those, it's going to take quite a while to do. But luckily, we can use a, a, a quicker option, and that is found in the Z plugin menu. If I drag this over here, what we can use is a multi-map exporter, and it does exactly what uh, what the name suggests. It will export various maps all at once from an object. Um, obviously, you've got your displacement, vector displacement, and all the other options down here. You can even export your model. And what we're going to do is we're going to export the displacement because we want to... We've got that sculpted detail into the surface, so we want that applied to our model as well when we come to render. We don't want to lose all that detail and all that hard work. We want our texture, which we've just spent a while creating uh, using polypaint. And we could also export a cavity and an ambient occlusion map. And we could export those just basically so that once we've got our basic diffuse map from our polypaint, we can then apply the ambient occlusion and the cavity map over the top of that just to add a bit more detail in there. Down here you can dictate uh, your size um, and other various options. Uh, Flip V basically just flips all of the maps vertically and Maya treats uh, texture slightly differently so you have to have that activated but to be honest it's on by default so don't worry too much about that um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about all of these options they're pretty self-explanatory got your size there you click on export options um, which was already open anyway and down here you can sort of fine-tune which the options per map so for example the mesh you could choose which subdivision level you want to export so for us, it would be the first subdivision level. You know, and there's lots of other options to play around with down here. Now, the only one I'm going to just quickly touch upon is the displacement map. Um, and this is something that crops up regularly when you're exporting from ZBrush and taking a displacement map into Maya. Uh, now, there's, there's two things I just wanted to quickly talk about. Now, first of all, you've got your main displacement map. Now sometimes using these default channels here, uh, default options here, your model may appear bloated, um, almost sort of inflated in a way, um, when you import your displacement map onto your model. And that's because of this option here. Now with a value of 0 0.5, basically the mid value um, is being treated as in Maya as as sort of 0 0.5 so it's going to inflate the mesh it's going to give the mesh an offset if we set that to zero then there's going to be no initial offset so Maya is going to treat the diffuse uh, the displacement map properly um, so if you're having issues with the model looking inflated make sure you export this with mid set to zero what we'll also do is set it to three channels and also export as a 32-bit map. You may also want to adjust your scale and you can do this quickly by just clicking get scale down here and that will set that all up automatically for you. So that's then uh, set up to export your displacement map to use in Maya. I mean obviously the uh, subdivision level will have that set to one because you want to you're going to be using the base mesh as your main model, so you want the displacement map calculated from that initial dis uh, base mesh. So there, the scale is now calculated, so that's all set up. Now, 
You'll notice up here we do have the option to export a normal map, but sometimes you don't want a normal map, you maybe just want a bump map. Now there isn't the option in Maya to, uh, in ZBrush to export just a bump map, but basically a bump map is essentially just a toned down displacement map. So we could use the displacement map to give sort of trickers into give, giving us a uh, bump map. And to do that we just need to change a few options. So let's disable these and we're going to change mid back to 0.5 because when it exports the bump map, well the displacement slash bump map, that 0 0.5 is going to be grey and in Maya when you're using a bump map or a height map grey is sort of the mid tone so anything below that will be recessed everything above that sort of the whiter areas will be whiter so in this instance we do want that set to 0 0.5 because that will be sort of the flat areas now we don't want it to be calculated from subdivision level 1 either we just want that subtle surface detail which is just going to give us the the wrinkles, the creases, the cracks in the surface of the skin. So we, I know that that model has six subdivisions. So we maybe want to grab it from a subdivision, one subdivision below, maybe two subdivisions below, because we just want that surface detail. So now we can export with those options and that will give us a bump map, which we can then add over the top of our displacement map. And this works, well, this is helpful for two reasons. Basically, for your displacement map to display all those really fine details, you're going to have to have your mesh subdivided quite a lot at render time, which could increase the overall render time. If you just use a bump map to give you that subtle surface detail, then your model doesn't need to be subdivided as much because it's getting all that detail just from a texture so it will speed things up a lot uh, in the long run. So that's just a few things just to think about when you come to export your maps. One other thing to note, if I do just close that down, once you've got all your maps set up, you can, because this is set up with subtools, we can enable subtools down here and that will like, go through each subtool and export all these maps for each subtool. So again that just takes the hassle out of that process for you. You can also enable merge maps which will merge all of these textures together. Now that's only handy if elements share a texture page so as we saw previously the scalp, the body and the inside of his mouth, the tongue, that all shared the same texture space. So uh, the texture page so it would be worth maybe temporarily deleting all the other subtools, just focusing on those three, have merge maps enabled and then ZBrush will do all the work for you. So that's enough waffling about uh, exporting your maps. When you've got all this set up, just go to create all maps and then ZBrush will just go through all the various options, generate all those maps for you and that is it, job done. You can then go across to Maya and I'm just going to switch over now. So here we have him, we have the mesh in the scene, he's posed, um, and this scene already has shaders and textures set up already for you, so you can open this and have a look and just see how they're all defined and set up. One thing I do want to note is the UVs on this model in this scene are slightly different to the ones that we've been generating throughout the course. So if there's a difference there, don't worry about it, it's because this was done um, previously and then the course was created after this was done. Um, when I you know, experimented with a different way to do the UV. So don't worry about that at all. If the textures look different, the UVs look different, just don't, don't worry about that. So you've got your model in Maya. He's obviously posed, so I've taken some time to put in some joints, pose him, you know, bake out that pose. And you want to start setting up your shaders. Now in here you will see we have um, skin shaders already set up, already, um, you know, working in there and rendering. Um, and they're just, I mean, I've, I've done some tutorials on 
building up skin shaders for 3D World before, so please, uh, I'm not going to go into too much details about them now, but please, if you want to visit my site, there are links to them from there, or you may be able to find them on Creative Block. But basically, you've got your basic skin shader set up here. You've got all your various maps in here. As you can see, we've got the base diffuse there. We've got all our subsurface scattering ones, our epidural, subdermal, and backscatter maps all piped in. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail there. Let's see if we can see there. You've just got a very basic sort of preview in there. What I wanted to show was how you set up the displacement maps, because obviously down here we have a bump shader, but there's no option to add in a displacement map. Now, to do that, you have to look elsewhere. And if you've got your shader selected like so, we're just going to click on this button here, which will go to our input connections. And that will take us to the shading node, or the shading group. And down here you've got your displacement mat tab. All you do is you click in here, create a new file node, and then that will point to the, um, you point that to your displacement map. Now if you go back to the actual displacement node, which is here, you can see we've got our texture pointing in there, you have a scale option. Now you, you now have the flexibility with that scale option to, you know, sort of increase or decrease the value of that displacement. So there, you can play around with that value there, but a scale value, the default value of one, will work quite well for our character here. And once you've got your displacement map piped in to your shading group, you can also visualize it roughly um, in the scene as well. If we go to our base shape, if we just close these down so you can see where I'm going, go to our smooth mesh options, Make sure you've got open subdiv active in there. Sometimes if your uh, global subdivision method is different, you'll need to change that, but we want to work with open subdiv. If we go down to open subdiv controls, we can now do show displacement. If I just turn off selection highlighting, if I turn that on, you'll see that the model does change. And what that's doing is it's just giving you a very basic representation of what the displacement map will do to the model. It's not final render quality, so it is just basic. And this is handy if you've got clothing on your model or you've got something over the surface. And if you're working to this mesh, when it gets rendered, the displacement, mesh, the displacement map is obviously going to change the surface of the model. So with that enabled, it allows you to see roughly where the displacement is going to push uh, the model out to and then you can work with that in mind. So that's just a little tip there if you're working with displacement maps in Maya 2015 that's just a nice little improvement. So you've applied your displacement map in um, into your shader you've got your shader all set up now there's one other area that you need to add to increase the quality of your displacement. Let's just turn on selection highlighting again. So what you need to do is dictate how many times a surface is gonna be subdivided when it comes to rendering. Um, and obviously the amount the mesh is subdivided um, is also gonna increase the quality of the displacement because it will be able to display more of the information held in that displacement map. So what we're going to do is just click onto the actual model itself. I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray, Approximation Editor. And all we're going to do is go down to Subdivisions down here. I'm going to leave everything set as default and you just click Create. What that will do is add a Mental Ray Subdiv Approx um, node onto your model and in here n subdiv number of su number of subdivisions um, by default that may be two so what that will do is it will tell it to subdivide the mesh two times then your displacement map will be um, applied and uh, the mesh 
uh, displaced accordingly. Now obviously if you want the fine detail around his face you're going to need a more dense model. So then you can increase that which will give you more polygons in there which can be displaced. The polygons will be smaller so you'll get more detail. Obviously the higher this number is the longer it's going to take to actually calculate and displace the model and also render. So I would work with a lower resolution of maybe two to start off with and then as you're approaching the point where you're thinking about doing your final render increase that to maybe four or possibly three if you can get away with it. If you are struggling with render times then that's when the bump map comes into play because you could have this set as two and that will give you all your majority of your larger um, displacement details and then your bump map will go in and give give you those you know the pores in the skin the fine lines and the creases in the face and you apply that to each mesh so I know that the scalp also has a displacement map um, because it's using the same skin texture so we have to apply that as well as you can see we've got one applied here you know and you apply that to each mesh that's going to be needed to be subdivided so all that's left to do you've got your skin shaders set up you've got all your textures piped in you've got your displacement maps which you've exported from ZBrush all we need to do now is go to let's just go to our render view I'm just going to drop this down and let's just do a render and just see how that's going to look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do two renders. I'm going to do a render without the displacement and a render with the displacement just so you can see the difference between the two. So I've rendered out a few variations here and you'll see these in the magazine as well. But what you're looking at now is this character but without a skin shader. So this is just using a basic blin shader. And if I switch between this frame and this frame, you can see the difference in the quality by taking the time to apply that basic um, subsurface scattering shader. You know, you've got much, much more subtle lighting across the surface, which is much more representative of skin. You know, and it doesn't take that long to set up and play around with. And like I say, if you if you want a more in-depth look at skin shading, then I have other tutorials online. Um, so please do take a look at those. But the main the main reason for rendering was just to show the difference between um, this model without a displacement and then this model with. So that's it without it set up, and that's it with. And obviously, you can see we've got these creases around here which we sculpted in. There's a lot more detail, body detail around there. So it's always worth just exporting that and bringing it into Maya and setting it up just as I've shown you. So I think we've pretty much come to the end of this, uh, this tutorial now. Um, We've looked at creating UV maps in Maya using the new Unfold 3D tools. We've then exported that into ZBrush, applied um, some basic sculpting and also added a texture. We've then brought that back into Maya, tied it all in with a skin shader and a displacement map and this is the result. I mean, From here I'm probably going to just add in some clothing, maybe some hair and just play around with this a little bit more. You'll see it as the final render that accompanies this tutorial. Um, but I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this course. Um, I've enjoyed making it. Um, if you've got any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact me through my site or on Twitter or even on my Facebook page. Um, so that's it for now. Enjoy playing around with these scenes and uh, I will see you on the next lesson.